A desert wind blows across the ruins of an ancient city. Dust swirls between crumbling bricks, once part of a thriving civilization. Thousands of years ago, two great cultures, India's mysterious Indus Valley and the cradle of Mesopotamia, flourished side by side, separated by mountains, rivers, and time. Yet now, a single strand of ancient DNA may be rewriting everything we thought we knew. For centuries, historians believed these civilizations developed independently, their languages, their gods, their ways of life, distinct, isolated. But what if that wasn't true? What if they were connected by blood? Buried deep beneath layers of clay and bone, scientists have uncovered a genetic clue, not a relic, not a text but a biological trace left behind by a forgotten traveler, one whose DNA speaks of journeys, exchanges, and secrets that span continents. As labs decode genomes and archaeologists re-examine ancient roots, a new theory emerges, one that suggests trade, migration, and cultural fusion between India and Mesopotamia were far more profound than we ever imagined. Could this discovery finally explain the shared symbols, technologies, and architectural wonders found across both regions? Could a single ancient life form unlock the truth about humanity's earliest international bond? One question remains. Was there a lost bridge between the Indus and the Tigris, hidden in our DNA all along? Before the pyramids of Egypt rose from the sand, before Rome cast its shadow across Europe, two of the world's oldest civilizations thrived in parallel. To the west, Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, birthplace of writing, law, and urban life. To the east, the Indus Valley Civilization, mysterious, mathematically precise, and astonishingly advanced. Around 2600 BCE, the bustling cities of Ur, Lagash, and Babylon stood in silent synchrony with the meticulously planned grid-like streets of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. Both civilizations developed monumental architecture, complex water systems, standardized weights, and mysterious writing systems. Yet, for centuries, scholars believed these achievements arose independently. Separated by over 2,500 kilometers, by the vast Iranian plateau, harsh deserts, and formidable mountain ranges, the Indus and Mesopotamian worlds seemed destined to remain apart, culturally and genetically. There were hints of contact, traded seals, exotic materials, similar motifs, but nothing conclusive, just speculation. Until now, the discovery of ancient DNA in unexpected places is shaking the very foundations of ancient history. Genetic evidence suggests that individuals carrying Indus Valley ancestry were present in Mesopotamian burial sites, and vice versa. How could that be? Were merchants, craftsmen, or even families crossing these ancient lands long before modern borders existed? What kind of network, forgotten by time, could allow such an exchange? What else might be hidden in the genetic record? waiting to rewrite the very map of early human civilization? This is not just history. It's a genetic breadcrumb trail stretching across millennia. It began with a single tooth. In the ruins of an ancient Mesopotamian graveyard near the city of Lagash, archaeologists uncovered a burial unlike the others. The skeleton, carefully laid to rest, showed signs of foreign origin, not in artifacts, but in biology. The tooth, still intact after nearly 4,000 years, was sent to a laboratory for a routine genetic scan. No one expected what it would reveal. When researchers sequenced the DNA, a peculiar genetic marker stood out, a rare haplogroup most commonly associated with populations from the ancient Indus Valley. At first, they assumed contamination, an error but further testing confirmed it. The individual buried in Mesopotamian soil carried unmistakable South Asian ancestry. 
The team was stunned. There had been theories of contact, trade, even intermarriage. But this was the first direct biological link. The tooth wasn't just a fossil. It was a message, preserved through time, encoded in the very fiber of life. Soon, more anomalies surfaced. In the archives of previous excavations, samples once dismissed were reanalyzed. Mitochondrial traces, bone fragments, all pointing to a similar origin, distant yet genetically unmistakable. Could these individuals have been traders, diplomats, or members of a migrant community whose history was erased by time? Whatever the answer, the implications were enormous. This wasn't just a random traveler lost in a foreign land. It hinted at something far deeper, a connection that defied geography and time. The search was on, and the ancient DNA was just beginning to speak. A mystery buried for millennia had just opened its eyes. The discovery set off a wave of scientific urgency. A multidisciplinary team assembled, geneticists, archaeologists, historians, and computational linguists. Their mission, trace the hidden migration routes, decode the DNA signatures, and cross-reference them with historical records. It was no longer a question of if the Indus and Mesopotamian civilizations had contact. It was how deep that connection truly went. They started with the obvious. Trade. Cuneiform tablets from Mesopotamia mention a distant land called Meluha, rich in goods like ivory, carnelian, and exotic woods. Many scholars long suspected Meluha was the Indus Valley, but without hard evidence, it remained a theory. Now, the DNA findings offered a new angle. If Meluhans did arrive in Mesopotamia, how did they get there? Geospatial mapping tools were used to reconstruct ancient river systems and caravan routes. Some paths led through the Persian Gulf by boat, others overland across the Iranian plateau. Both were treacherous. Deserts, bandits, illness, and yet the genetic traces persisted. Meanwhile, samples from the Indus Valley were re-examined. Burial sites in Gujarat and Sindh revealed individuals with genetic markers foreign to South Asia, closer to the ancient Fertile Crescent than previously thought. The flow wasn't one way. There was movement in both directions, but it wasn't just genes they were tracing. Researchers began analyzing cultural parallels, identical motifs in seals, nearly identical brick ratios in architecture, shared religious iconography. Could these be the fingerprints of a forgotten network? Then came a breakthrough and a challenge. Some of the most promising samples were degraded beyond usability. Whole genomes were fragmented, corrupted by time and moisture. The team faced an agonizing wait as new preservation techniques were applied, one bone at a time. The stakes were high. If they failed, this ancient story would remain incomplete. But if they succeeded, they might uncover the oldest human migration corridor ever documented. The results were undeniable. After months of delicate extraction and advanced genomic reconstruction, the fragmented DNA samples from both Mesopotamian and Indus Valley burial sites were finally readable. Scientists fed the sequences into global genetic databases, searching for matches, migrations, and anomalies. Then it happened. Across thousands of years and kilometers of distance, multiple samples lit up with the same genetic signature. Haplogroup LM20, a lineage rooted deeply in South Asia, yet now clearly present in individuals buried in ancient Mesopotamia. Even more astonishing, reciprocal markers from Mesopotamian lineages began appearing in Indus Valley remains. This wasn't coincidence. This was a bi-directional genetic exchange. Advanced isotope analysis of teeth and bones confirmed it. These individuals had not lived and died in their place of burial.
their chemical signatures revealed they had been born far away, traveled as children or young adults, and died in foreign lands. Some were women, suggesting intermarriage, not just trade delegations. Others showed signs of high-status burials, suggesting they were not outsiders, but integrated members of elite society. Even more compelling, genetic drift models indicated that this wasn't a one-time event. The migrations happened over centuries, long enough to establish familial lines and cultural blending. This meant communities weren't just passing through. They were living, building, and leaving legacies on both sides. For the first time in history, DNA had given voice to the silent. These weren't abstract traders or faceless travelers. They were real people whose descendants may still walk among us. One sentence echoed through the research teams again and again. We're not just rewriting history. We're remembering it. Picture this. A convoy of traders moves through the blazing heat of the Iranian plateau. Bronze wheels creak over dry earth. Camels grunt under the weight of carnelian beads, ivory, spices, and cotton cloth, goods born in the lush riverbanks of the Indus. Men speak a language no longer heard today. On their arms, seals carved with animals and script unknown to Mesopotamian scribes. They follow star maps, water routes, and ancient oral knowledge, moving ever westward. Weeks later, the convoy reaches the shores of the Persian Gulf. Wooden boats, stitched with date palm fiber, carry them north toward the delta of the Euphrates. When they arrive, the city of Ur shimmers in the sun, its ziggurats rising like mountains from the plain. They are greeted not as foreigners, but as partners. Over time, Indus merchants establish quarters in Mesopotamian cities. They build homes, marry locals, raise children. Their crafts influence pottery. Their weights reshape trade standards. Their beliefs leave subtle marks in mythologies. And the same happens in reverse. Mesopotamian artisans, scribes, and dreamers venture east, following the whispers of gold, prosperity, and wonder. Temples in the Indus Valley begin to reflect foreign architecture. Shells from the Arabian Sea show up in Sumerian tombs. Across the centuries, a quiet but powerful fusion unfolds, beyond the view of kings or the pages of scribes. And when war, drought, or catastrophe finally break these ancient links, the traces remain, not in stone, but in blood. Their legacy is not just in artifacts. It lives on in us. Through DNA, we now see the bridge of breath and bone that once connected the Indus and the Tigris. A story buried by sand, remembered by cells. This wasn't just trade. It was civilization. Shared. What began as a forgotten grave has now become a doorway to the past. The hidden genetic link between India and Mesopotamia shatters the illusion of ancient isolation. These were not separate stories. They were chapters in the same human saga. A saga of movement, exchange, love, ambition, and survival. Today, we stand at the edge of a new historical frontier, where DNA doesn't just solve mysteries, it gives voice to the lost. Every genome, every buried tooth, every crumbling bone has the power to reshape everything we thought we knew. And what else lies buried? Still waiting? In labs around the world, scientists continue to unearth the biological footprints of forgotten travelers, perhaps in the bones of a child found in a desert cave, or in the ashes of a burned city beneath the ocean, or even in your own ancestry. This is not just about Mesopotamia and the Indus. It's about all of us. We are the inheritors of ancient journeys, interconnected by strands of code, invisible yet indelible. So if you thought history was just kings and wars, think again. Because the true story of humanity 
is written in our cells. If this discovery fascinated you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore our other episodes, where science, history, and the unknown collide in stories that will change the way you see the world. The past is speaking, and it's written in DNA.